Let's look next at classification. So far we've been looking at regression examples. <clears throat> you give an input and you make a prediction and that prediction is a numerical value, a continuous value. For the toy car we say, how long is it going to take this, this car to travel 5 metres, 6 metres? We could even go 5.6 metres. For the salary calculation likewise, we're given in years of experience predicting what a salary is and the salary is a, is a continuous number. Now, I think everyone's familiar with this child's toy, um, which is pretty much what classification machine learning does. It, it, it takes a load of objects and it, it says, hmm, I think this is a square. I think this is a triangle. I think this is a circle. It puts similar items, items that it thinks are similar, with other similar items. Now, unlike regression, where, where the numbers are continuous, there's a discrete number of classes that things can be put into. Even something we think that's quite complicated, like the self-driving car, um, it's obviously needed a lot, you know, the self, self-driving self cars that Google have got uh, has used a lot of data into it. But even so, it, it's, it's trying to... It, bubbles down to a limited set of actions that can be performed. Do I need to speed up? Do I just keep going straight ahead? Should I turn left? Should I turn right? Should I slow down? Should I emergency stop? So a lot of things can be broken down to those, those sim, you know, a, a discrete, you know, I, I'm, there's on, on a self-driving car, there's probably a few more classes than that. But essentially, you know, when we drive, those are the, you know, the six types of action that we're, we're most often doing, you know, and we're often thinking about. What we're going to look at now is <clears throat> classification of house prices in New Zealand. You've heard, of course, that estate agent saying, you know, location, location, location. And for this example, we're going to assume that the house price, um, the residential house price for a house, is determined only by location. And we're going to choose um, each house to, to fit into one of six classes. Class one is under 300,000, class two from 300 to 600,000. And so on and so on, up to class six, which is literally anything that's over one and a half million. And what I've done is I've taken 2,000 random examples uh, from the um, land information. And I've got the house price information for that those houses. And they've those data points have created uh, a map that looks like this. And this was, a, in a way, a data check itself. If I've randomized the data correctly, you should get a map of New Zealand, which is exactly what I get. Ta-da! And most importantly, you can see, for instance, there's concentration of points here for Auckland, which is our, our biggest city, as you'd expect, and Wellington. And you can see Christchurch there. I believe that's Dunedin and then the Cargill and uh, New Plymouth, and I think that's Taronga, and that's Hastings. So that looks pretty, that looks like a good start. And you can see again, um, center of Auckland, expensive. Uh, center of, um, of Wellington, expensive. Center of Christchurch is expensive. Obviously Auckland, we all know about this. Auckland is the most expensive place to live in New Zealand. And yes, you can see that, they, that generally the colours are, are, are much more um, akin with um, being expensive there. In the middle of nowhere, there's, there's all these, these dark blues that indicate relatively cheaper. And indeed, you, you see a pattern of getting more expensive the closer you, you get to these, um, these city points.
So that's good. That gives us a, that that means we've got some quite reasonable data to work with. So this is our real estate prediction program. As you might expect, um, because there's so much more data, um, they, I've created a separate uh, file to, containing about 2,000, yeah, just over 2,000 data items there, um, from the, which includes the number, an arbitrary number, uh, the latitude, longitude, the price uh, category, which was we said was a number between one and six, the actual price, just in case I need to verify this and, and the address. Um, I read that, uh, create my input and output array like I've been doing before. And then <laughs> um, I'm using, gonna use different types of, um, of algorithm again. Um, I'm going to use a, a nearest centroid, a Bayesian ridge, a neural network. Now, a neural network is is a slightly tricky one to do. I've, I'm a, so I'm trying to use different depths or configurations of neural network to see what's going to give me the best result. And there should also be somewhere uh, just tucked away here. Bad coding, bad coding, but something called uh, the K near, nearest neighbors, uh, and that's that's again a different uh, algorithm. Let's let's give that a, let's give that a title. Fix that. K nearest fixed. So that's, that's great, that's all fine and dandy, um, but how am I gonna be able to work out whether or not my, um, that particular model, which which model is best basically? Um, what I've decided to do is I've really focused um, on a place called Ponsonby Road, Ponsonby in, in Auckland, which is known to be the most expensive, the most expensive area in New Zealand. So I'm expecting that to come out as a class six. Yeah. Uh, also for just some, um, for some comparison, I've uh, chosen uh, an area, Kekatahi, um, that's in, in the middle of nowhere. It's so in the middle of nowhere. I don't know how to pronounce it. I'm really sorry for that. Um, also an area in Upper Hot and somewhere Oriental Bay. Um, this area in the middle of nowhere, I'm expecting to be a class one. Upper hat, hot, probably a two. Oriental Bay, mm, it's a re relatively expensive area. Uh, maybe not a six, but certainly not a one or a two. So you can see, you can see there's a certain logic I'm, I'm using there. Um, so let's run it and see what happens. And now it's obviously going to take a little while because there's a lot of data to process. There we go, we've loaded all, all the data in. It's creating the model, and there's quite a few models to create, and it's, as you can see here, once once that data's um, fed into things, uh, it's then gotta fit that data. Um, and we've got about six models on the go, so there's gonna be a lot of fitting going on. Yay, we're finished. Like so, so, how did we get on? Um, as you can see, let's look at the um, the neural networks. I've tried different different types of complex, simple, shallow, and small shallow. Uh, these are just different configurations. Um, I, I tried at first using the most complicated one I could do, and it reckons Ponsonby Road is a two. I can assure you, Ponsonby is not in that price category. The simpler one actually gets closer with a three. Um, I tried to, to use a big and it's slightly shallow again, not very good at two. Three, three is better, but it's not great. Um, the Bayesian Ridge, uh, yeah, um, uh, 3.35, it's 
guess it's getting closer, but not really. Uh, the algorithm KNN, which basically is using a, a nearest neighbor algor algorithm, it's pretty good. Ponsonby Road, that's that well, that's almost faultless. Um, for Oriental Bay classified of three, I would have expected it to be a four, but um, I, I actually looked at the data for this, um, scrutinized it, and there's a few items nearby where I can understand why that error is happening. It's it's occasionally con uh, comparing a flat with a house because I couldn't f I couldn't filter out um, because of the data that I was using. Sometimes it doesn't always discriminate between a house and a flat, and so so maybe three is about right. Up hot prices as a two seems about right, and this um, Kakatahi, yeah. Oh, I've got it right. Uh, as a one seems about right. So, so this model performs so much better than these other models, and this is, as I was saying, that um, the you know for a particular problem, there are there is probably going to be one type of algorithm for machine learning that will perform better than other ones, but it will vary by problem. There is not a perfect one. The best thing to do is to again take your data processes it uh, run different machine business machine learning on it try and predict something outside of that data and work out which which of these models seems to perform better do you know what that's that process is called of comparing one thing against another, another it's testing and it's why testing again is at the heart of machine learning now we're going to look at a uh, a different type of classifier tool, the Google Cloud Vision API. It's a lot more advanced than my example. Well, it's Google. They can, they've got a lot more money to produce things um, and time. <laughs> but it's in essence the same thing. I'm going to drop a, a picture into there and it's going to tell me what's in that picture. Um, so, oh, let's start with this picture of myself and my wife what does he think it sees well you and me you and I can see that that's a man and a woman with some trees what does the Google Cloud analysis think well first of all it thinks that um, we're happy we're looking very happy we are both smiling. I think, I think that's fair to say. Um, we don't look like we're, we've got sorrow or anger or surprise or exposed or blurred. There's probably very few photos where we've deliberately taken a selfie where we're angry. Uh, notice my wife's headwear, which is quite, quite good. Um, anything on the labels? Oh, cool. So it's noticed that there are flowers, 98%. Now, notice it doesn't say absolutely, but it, it thinks there are. A 98% chance there is. And there's a plant and there's people in there. And there are glasses. Uh, there's a tree. There's sunglasses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's woody paint. Mm, yeah. There's pink. There's lots of pink. Of course there's pink. There's vision care. Supposedly I'm blind. There are smiles there and there is emotion and there is fun and there is spring. Vacation, possibly. There's a girl. Uh can confirm my wife is a girl um, but is there a boy you know some of this is a bit hit and miss it's only 53 percent chance of blossom that is a cherry blossom behind us uh, only 57 percent chance of happiness maybe we're not really that happy um let's try another file um ah let's again uh, this is a bit more scenic that's me, my son, and Bob Dowling. Uh, Lisa Crispin's what husband? I'm sure it's not Lisa Crispin's wife. Um, what does it think's going on here? We're happy. It's quite ha happy. We're not sorrow. We're not angry. Angry. We're not surprised. We're not <laughs> exposed. We're not blurred, and we somehow it's not noticing headway. You know. We are mainly wearing hats and that thing. But what labels have we got? We've got trees. We've got fun. We've got winter. Ooh. 
it was in the middle of winter. There are plants behind us. Recreation, travel, vehicles, smiles. Hmm. Not bad. Would have been nice for it to notice we were wearing coats. Uh, not noticing that we're men. Uh, let's try a landscape. Um, got, got something here. This is Wellington Waterfront. Probably not the greatest picture ever taken the Wellington Waterfront, but hey, let's see what happens. We've got sky, we've got bodies of water. We have water. Waterway, sea, town, city harbour, evening. I'm pretty sure this was in the morning. Marina, river. But it, 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 it's quite interesting to see how it breaks things down. Um, it's working out what elements are there. Not noticing, oh yeah, it does. it is noticing sky. Um, not noticing traffic cones or fencing. Uh, but that's pretty good. That's 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 pretty good. One last one, I think. Um, might be two last ones actually. So of course, with it doing so well with photos, uh, that leads to the next thing. Is, well, what? How well does it interpret um, drawings? Photos are a hard, hard, hard cut physical things. Uh, a drawing is an interpretation of a thing. Um, me and my wife sometimes have a drawing competition, so this is my drawing. Um, and when I ran this a few months ago, you can tell how 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 well it is is learning. I put this through; it didn't recognize it as a cat. It was probably my drawing, but it did notice a sixty percent chance of dog, which f would probably offend most cats. But yes, strong chance of cats. Obviously, Google has been learning lots about cats. It notices it's black and white and it's a mammal. It's a small to medium sized cat noticing whiskers and it's noticing it's a drawing. I don't know why it would think it was a fauna. Yes, it is a cat like mammal. It is a sketch. It's a tabby cat. It's a kitten, I suppose, and it definitely is a carnivore. Um, it thinks it might have a wing. Is my drawing that bad? Um, could be monochrome photography. It's at an angle. And it's art. Thank you. It's only 50% chance of art. Finally here, we're going to have a look at another Google tool. Uh, the Cloud Natural Language uh, tool. And again, this, this performs uh, class classification analysis on uh, written words. So I'm going to enter this text into here. That's not that, that text, but this one. Brad is an idiot. He keeps forgetting my name. And I can't remember the last time he was at work on time. Janice, though, I find much easier to get along. She can be a bit bossy at times, but generally she's reasonable and fun to work with. So a paragraph talking about two different subjects. Um, we like Brad. We don't really... Uh, we like Janice. We don't really like Brad. Um, let's see what it analyzes. Okay, so again, this breaks it up into different things. So it notices there's there's an entity called Brad, and one who's a person, and Janice, who's also a person. There are things talked about an idiot, about work, about fun, about times, and about name, uh, and everything. You know, <laughs> if you if you were to break break this down. Brad is an idiot, work, uh, mm, fun and time. Yeah, these are, these are all, all what's on there. It's the sentiment one where it links them together. Um, and it, it's doing analysis. And Brad is an idiot. He keeps forgetting my name. It talks about things being scores and magnitude. And score is about emotional level. At minus a half, it's quite negative things. And in quite a reasonably strong way about Brad. And I can't remember last time he was on work on time is a kind of, mm, you know, 
not very strong sentiment, but not very strongly felt. When I say she can be bossy at times, but generally she's reasonable and fun to work with, it sees this as a, as a very positive statement felt very strongly. So, so again, what it's what it's doing is interesting. It's you know it it it's breaking down um, text that it's given into things and sentiments. Um, it's interesting. It's potentially useful, but uh, you know, as we've said before, and we've gone through many examples now, it's certainly not um, artificially generally intelligent. It's it's just rating things. It's just sorting things into boxes that it's been provided. Um, that can be hand. That can be incredibly handy. Can you imagine having something this uh, with an email coming in and going, "Oh, this person." You know, before you open the email, go, "Oh, I think this person's quite irate," as like a a, a pre warning, or even this person's so uh, the language is so hostile. I don't even want one of my customers to respond to this. Uh, I will just uh, so one of our call centers to, to, to respond to this. We're just going to give them an automatic response that they what they they said was uh, was wasn't acceptable, uh, and that if they want our help, they have to rephrase they rephrase their uh, inquiry. You know, and that could make a big difference.